Should you get the nano-textured anti-glare display? And will these new iPads suffer from burn-in? Let's explore it all and compare it to the last generation iPad Pros. Before I can talk about why the new display is so impressive as well as compare it to that last generation and the nano-textured version, I have to talk about the differences between LCD, mini LED, and OLED. Most of Apple's iPad use LCD technology for their displays, while the last generation 12.9 inch model used mini LED. The new iPad Pros both use OLED. As a generality, OLED is the preferable display type among the three. It has a really high contrast ratio, beautiful colors, and doesn't suffer from the blooming effect as with some of the others. This all comes down to how they're constructed. LCD uses a backlight system. It makes it the most affordable and is able to get very bright because you can just increase the output of that back panel. Mini LED is similar but uses a bunch of backlit zones so they can better control the brightness across the entire display. As many users complained, myself included, that means there was substantial blooming on the last generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And so that a crisp black, you'd have light leaking through, creating this effect. It looked better than basic LCD for sure, but those blacks are better in OLED. See, instead of a uniform backlight or even multiple backlit dimming zones, OLED is made up of individual subpixels that emit their own light in white, green, red, and blue, instead of one pixel being responsible for displaying all the colors. Ditching that backlight allows for thinner displays. We saw that with these new iPad Pros, among other benefits, including being able to hide things behind the display. You've probably heard rumors of behind the screen face ID, which would be enabled by light passing through the gaps between the pixels to hit that sensor. Because each pixel is individually controlled and being completely dark when there's no power to apply to any sub pixel, you can get almost perfect contrast with one pixel being on and the ones next to it being off. Blacks are real black, whereas on an LCD display, there's still light leaking through the panel and color filter. That raises a new issue though, brightness. Without the backlight to rely on, OLED can be dimmer than other display types. In my coverage of the new iPad Pros, I've had a shocking number of comments saying that they'd rather just buy the Tab 9 because it too uses OLED. And that's true that Samsung has used OLED for a while in their tablets, but that Samsung tablet only outputs roughly 400 nits, while Apple outputs 1000, not to mention the 1600 nits of peak brightness during HDR playback. That's why Apple went the unique route of using a tandem OLED design. They literally stacked two OLED panels on top of one another to output that crazy amount of uniform full screen brightness. And in person, it looks glorious. The peak brightness does top out at 930 nits for HDR on the Tab 9 Ultra with a starting price of 1200. That's still lower than the iPad Pro's brightness. Going back to another common concern that I have heard countless times already, burn in. The good news is that this issue is already just far overblown. Burn-in is a legacy concern that has, for the most part, been resolved by advancements in display technology. Unless you have the same thing on your display 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, it's just not going to happen. They can do all sorts of things now to mitigate this, from shifting static elements on screen, one pixel to either the left or the right, or adjusting the voltage threshold on a regular basis to kind of refresh each pixel. This is all to say that Apple has done something amazing here with the new iPad Pros. It expertly managed the move to OLED while not succumbing to the most commonly raised issues. Here in the studio, I specifically have the new 2024 13-inch iPad Pro with that nano texture finish, as well as the 2022 iPad Pro with its glossy mini LED display. I'll first compare the old to the new display before helping you decide which is the best finish for you. Hey. Real quick, do you want to experience twice as fast load times in Safari on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac? Then download Magic Lasso Adblock, the ad blocker designed for you. It's easy to set up, blocks all YouTube ads, and doubles the speed at which Safari can load. Thank you to Magic Lasso Adblock for sponsoring today's video. Magic Lasso is a fast, efficient, and high performance ad blocker. With over 5,000 five-star reviews, it's one of the highest rated Safari ad blockers for your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Magic Lasso blocks all intrusive ads, trackers, and annoyances in Safari and lets you see the difference that ad blocking makes. And unlike some other ad blockers, 
Magic Lasso respects your privacy and doesn't accept payment from advertisers. The app also blocks over 10 types of YouTube ads, including all video ads and pop-up banner ads. So join over 300,000 users and download Magic Lasso ad block from the App Store or via magiclasso.co. As a special offer for Apple Insider viewers, use the link below to receive one month's free access to all of the app's features. Thanks again to Magic Lasso Adblock for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. The mini LED display looked great, but as I mentioned, blooming was a big issue. The new OLED looks stunning by comparison. The white looks more like a piece of paper, while the blacks are as dark as they could possibly be. It's truly one of the most beautiful displays that I've used, and I just love it. But the new display has other benefits too, other than just looking better. This new OLED panel still has ProMotion baked in with a variable refresh rate up to 120Hz. New this time though is the ability to drop all the way down to 10Hz. This helps conserve battery life by not having to refresh the display so frequently when on-screen content is static. Apple also increased the response time on the updated tablet to improve how quickly they react to your input. For example, scrolling with ProMotion feels more like you're interacting with a physical object. You can see this for yourself as I scroll on the old tablet and the new tablet, and I freeze a frame right in the middle. The new iPad Pro screen is significantly sharper than the last generation, and it keeps up closer with my finger. Apple Pencil is another great example of this. As you draw, it's able to better keep up. Again, this freeze frame tells the story, with the new iPad Pro keeping the drawing path just behind the stylus tip, while there's a bigger gap on the old model. Between the improved refresh rate and the game-changing tandem OLED tech, the new iPad Pro has a display worth getting excited about. So which should you buy? The Nano Texture Anti-Glare version or the glossy one? Apple is relying on a new chemical-based process for the iPad Pro that differs from what it used on the Pro Display XDR. Instead of mechanically etching little bumps on the display that can't be touched, this chemical process alters the optical properties to diffuse light without those little bumps. Comparatively, it's more durable and it's meant to be touched. I haven't noticed any durability issues over the last week or so. The finish covers most of the display, leaving a glossy lip just over the edge of the black bezels. Apple does include a cleaning cloth in the box, but you can use your own microfiber one if you want. Fingerprints do show on the anti-glare screen though, even if you've got clean hands. No more or less than the glossy one though. I will say I prefer it when using Apple Pencil. It gives a slight paper-like feel to it, and the pencil glides differently across it. It's better, and frankly, way nicer than some of those aftermarket magnetic screen protectors. It's just a more premium experience. Its main purpose, though, is to reduce the glare when used in bright environments. This it does quite well. To test, let's go on a field trip to the outside. So here we are on our field trip. We've got everything we need. We got copious sun. I've got a pair of iPads. I've got a toddler. What more do we need? Let's get testing. Here we are, both of these iPads propped up on my strawberry garden. We have the last generation iPad here on the left and the new one here on the right. I think it's a really interesting comparison because this last gen model only has a brightness of 600 nits, whereas the new one is all the way up at 1000 nits. And yet they both seem decently viewable here. What I'm noting is like that anti-glare finish really is reflecting fingerprints. Like they are diffused all over the place and I really thought it would do better. I can see the anti-glare display very well, but it's not so much more noticeable than the glossy option. Using it here in really bright direct sun, I thought it would be a bigger advantage to that nano texture, but you know, based on this, I'd kind of lean towards the, uh, the glossy of the two displays. Both of them are on max brightness, and if this was the new iPad with the glossy display at 1,000 nits, I think it would hold up even better when compared to the nano textured finish. Okay, back inside. There is a slight bit of hazing, though, and there is a minute amount of sharpness loss, but not enough to really irk me. The glare isn't completely gone though, it's just merely diffused, which may or may not sit well with everyone. Our own Mike Worthley hates the finish, pointing out that it kills the black levels, which is one of the biggest benefits of OLED. At the same time, I like the finish a lot. If you want the crispest, sharpest display technology though, stick with the traditional glossy. 
If you use it outside a lot, the anti-glare is probably worth consideration. For me, I think I'm just going to stick with a glossy finish. It just looks better. So what do you think of Apple's new display tech? Do you love the OLED as much as I do? And which do you prefer, glossy or nano texture? Sound off down below. And as always, be sure you're subscribed to the channel with those notifications turned on so you don't miss the latest rumors and features.